Oh boy, let's look at what the internet has got for us today. It's a home of inventions. Oh, such a jerk. You need to Google the meaning of inventions. If you hate you it so much, the goddamn the point of this game. It's actually better than a first first song in here is Maybe a if song. we're not so damn serious on this, then it, it is in fact it is a god so very game. Like Are you stupid? Hmm. This looks like something new has come out for this terrible franchise. Why don't we take a look at that? All right, let's just uh, bend the end the chapter three. Oh no, 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 not again, not again. This calls for the last resort. Come on! So I guess I can't escape this thing, even if I'm dead. I suppose it's fitting, it's Halloween now. Vincent's a ghost. I guess let's talk about... Bendy and the Ink Machine, Chapter 3, The Rise and Fall. You know, I was gonna go easier on this thing until this happened. I just spent an hour and 15 minutes trying to get footage from this thing to try to explain the problems with this piece of software's artificial lengthening via backtracking for fetch quests where the items are in randomly generated locations each time. To my complete non-surprise, the very first fetch quest was bugged. The game generated four accessible gearboxes with gears, that is to say the specific item you'd have to collect, in them, two accessible empty gearboxes, and nothing else. I scoured the floor that the game told me to scour. Then I looked on each other floor in the vain, vague hope that something might show up somewhere else. I found the locations of all the items for the next fetch quest that requires you to backtrack into the uninspired, messy floor maps. I found the locations of where I assume the items for the third fetch quest are, and I found all of the fourth quest's locations. My assumption is that since you see a couple gearboxes at the beginning of the chapter before you cross the door that permanently shuts behind you, the game generated the gear I needed into one of those boxes. That, or it just didn't generate the box that it needed to, because why would it? Let me put this search I did into perspective for you. Each floor has got one functional exit, which is via the staircase. So suppose you started at the staircase door at the top floor like I did, and then followed the left-hand wall continuously. This will take you across every wall surface that exists in the map, unless the map has some walls that are not connected to the outer walls, island walls if you will. So on my first sweep, I used this method to cover every wall surface on the top floor where the gearboxes are supposed to be. I found only the ones that I'd already opened and no remaining one. I then followed the left-hand wall through the door into the stairway and proceeded to use this same process for every floor on the map and the connecting stairways. Then I did it again, looking out specifically for the island walls like I mentioned. Of course, there's one such island wall in the floor with the glass windows and the weird operating table. That floor has a plentitude of the next quest's location items, but none of the first one. That tiny little island wall is something that I saw the first time I went through that floor anyway, so it's not like it's something that I found that was new. So I give up. This video isn't going to have specific video samples for each point because it's a broken piece of software. I will not waste more time on trying to do more of the same thing. So instead, let's see whether this thing is salvageable or just the same kind of garbage. In the spirit of trying to be as fair as possible, which I will admit is going to be very difficult for me, I'll present six things about the game and try to make it an even three good, three bad split. First pair, point one, the positive point, is that the voice acting for Alice Angel's character isn't bad. Bits of your mind, swimming like, like fish in a bowl. First I asked for orphans, inky womb. I was a 
It's a bit cliche to hear the distorted and pitch shifted audio behind it, because every time there's an evil character that has some sort of eldritch upbringing or background, that's what they do to the audio to make you know. But hey, whatever. The girl who did the voice work has promise. She should get out of doing anything more for this thing, and go work for better games that are actual games as soon as possible. Point two, the character model is introduced with an ineffective jump scare that does nothing for the player. People will tend to overreact when presented with a jump scare in a game, but even that is giving this piece of only mildly interactive repetitive fiction too much credit. None of the scares in this software are effective, from the first jump scare to the guy bursting out of the poster on the wall, which is hokey as hell by the way. To every time the enemies show up in any context, nothing in this software is scary. Pair 2.1, the art style for the software is consistent, and I'm pretty certain that this is the main reason the software garnered as much attention as it initially did. The concept of the world is interesting, and the aesthetic helps to draw the eye toward the scenery and textures and characters, and only slightly away from the massive flaws and cut corners. Point two, there is a level of inconsistency in this game that permeates and pervades everything. Yes, okay, the items spawn in different locations each time you play. I've covered how garbage that is in a previous video about why this software is just lazy and bad. What got me this time was not only that, but the enemies, and how many times you have to hit them in order to kill them. The Seekers, those ink puddle guys that show up every once in a while, are all the same character model and the same kind of creature. Yet, you will find that some of them take one hit with the wrench to kill. Some of them take two hits, which is annoying because they are a stark minority, and therefore are not something that the player is prepared to have to spend twice as much arduous time dealing with. But some take even three or four hits. Where is the consistency? There's no actual reason to change the amount of hits necessary to dispatch the largely inoffensive nuisances that this software tries to peddle its hardest to convince you are threats. This goes on for the cobbled together butcher gang as well. There is at least a level of uniformity there though. All the enemies behave in exactly the same way, despite what kind of character model the software arbitrarily chose for them. What's the point in having different skins if they are all just the same enemy? Pair 3.1. For what it's worth, the lore of the game got more complicated. Whether it's deeper or just more, I will leave for another video, but there is more to the story now that we didn't have before. It opens up new avenues of conversation regarding what the ink machine does and who the monsters you encounter are. Point two ties in here though, just adding more to a story does not make it deeper. A complicated story can still be shallow, and this one seems to be very disjointed and shallow. It can't seem to decide whether or not Bendy's ink drool form has sentience or is mindless. It can't decide what it wants to do with Alice in regards to the rest of the studio, in regards to Bendy, and in regards to the ink machine. It cannot decide just how the studio works either. The sheer size of the maps we've seen thus far indicate that they cannot be built like normal, but the items and supplies and recording equipment and audio logs suggest that they were built like normal. So what's the deal? Like I said, and I really want to emphasize this, adding bits to a story doesn't necessarily make it deeper or better, just more complicated. This chapter does very little to connect itself to the rest of the story, and the software's overall experience suffers for it. I mean, it's bad enough that there's just so much backtracking, artificial lengthening in the form of the achievement that forces you to play the chapter twice to get it, and that the promises of quote-unquote more weapons and more combat were all just so much smoke in the wind. Every weapon that you get is exactly the same, minus how many hits you have to use for the killing the thing. Every enemy is exactly the same, minus what skin they are looking at. 
This chapter just doesn't feel like it's really part of the original story either, like it was tacked onto the first bit when the creator couldn't decide what to write next. Don't waste your money on this garbage piece of software. If you must experience it, watch someone else play it, and then gain the second-hand boredom and tedium from there, so that you didn't waste $6 to do it yourself. Support your favorite YouTuber and watch their videos, but you really, really won't be missing anything if you give this software a miss. Yes, you will notice that I took painstaking care to make sure that I did not slip up and call this experience a game. The end. 